Good morning, good morning, good morning um, from the... I, I realize this camera angle is slightly different because I've got the uh, the table down on the, the carpet instead of on the first step. So, yeah, even though I'm back in the sanctuary, I'm not quite where I, I used to be. So, all right. This morning, we are going to uh, finish off, I believe. No, not quite finish off. We're going to get very close to the end of, of the Passion of Our Lord. And um, uh, an interesting time. And we're going to finish off, in theory, the, uh, the large catechism of the Lord's Prayer. So we'll, uh, we're moving towards wrapping things up. That is sort of the uh, theme of November. We'll also pray the litany today. So that's where we're set up and ready to go. I really should turn to the right page for the devotional. So, let us begin page 295. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 22 is the crucifixion psalm. It, it dovetails with our Lord's Passion. Um, and uh, if you'd like to, I highly recommend reading it on your own. But the first five verses for us. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever and ever. Amen. Our uh, Gospel reading is Matthew 27, verses 33 through 56. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him, that is Jesus, wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put this charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sakbani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, The man is calling Elijah. And one that once ran, took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, 
They were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The temptation was for Jesus to come down off the cross. That is really what is going on with those mocking him. Jesus' ministry begins with Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness, uh, tempting him to satisfy himself, tempting him to to, uh, have salvation come about by everyone praising him to have salvation come about by Jesus not having to tangle with death. And that's the same temptation that's going on here in the crucifixion. Come down off the cross and we'll believe in you. Come down off the cross and we'll acknowledge you. And even when Jesus quotes scripture, Eli, Eli, lemma chakbanai, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's not just saying that for random. He is calling out and telling them, look at the psalm. This is why I'm not coming down off the cross. I'm fulfilling this. And they still don't get it. They're still looking other places than the word. And he dies. And creation is shook. Because the Lord of creation has just taken up the burden of the fall of creation. And you have the earthquakes, and and resurrection breaks out early. People rise from the dead early, because this is the aftershock, the, 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 the shaking apart of the kingdom of death. And even the centurions can tell this for what it is. This is something godly going on. Jesus isn't ashamed of the cross. He doesn't run away from it. He does determinedly and doggedly what must be done for your salvation. And that is the the most awesome and wondrous thing that we can ponder. That Jesus does everything that is required for our salvation. And even while he is doing it, he points us to the scriptures that explain what is going on. It's what we do now, even. We we point to the scriptures that explain what Christ is doing. Not explain, that proclaim what Christ is doing. So that we may see that this was not only just the Son of God, but the Son of God come for us and for our salvation. Who for us men and for our salvation. So, (coughs) having said that, let's move on to... uh, looking at the large catechism, the seventh petition. But deliver us from evil. In Greek, the text, re- the text of this petition reads, deliver or preserve us from the evil one, or the hateful one. It looks like Jesus was speaking about the devil, like he would summarize every petition in one. So the entire substance of all our prayers directed against our chief enemy. For he, for it is he who hinders among us everything that we pray for, God's name or honor, God's kingdom and will, our daily bread, a cheerful good conscience, and so forth. Therefore, we finally sum it all up and say, Father, grant that we be rid of all these disasters. But there is also included in this petition whatever evil may happen to us under the devil's kingdom. Poverty, shame, death, and in short, all the agonizing misery and heartache of which there is such an unnumbered multitude on earth. Since the devil is not only a liar, but also a murderer, John 8, he constantly seeks out our life. He wrecks his vengeance whenever he can afflict our bodies with misfortune and harm. Therefore it happens that he often breaks men's necks or drives them to insanity, drowns some and moves many to commit suicide and to many other terrible disasters. See Mark 9. 
So there's nothing for us to do upon earth but to pray against this arch enemy without stopping. For unless God preserved us, we would not be safe from this enemy even for an hour. You see again how God wishes for us to pray to him for all things that affect our bodily interests, so that we seek and expect help nowhere else except in him. But he has put this matter last. For if we are to be preserved and delivered from all evil, God's name must first be hallowed in us. His kingdom must be with us, and his will must be done. After that, he will finally preserve us from sin and shame, and beside, from everything that may hurt or harm us. So God has briefly placed before us all the distress that may ever come upon us, so that we might have no excuse whatever for not praying. But all depends on this, that we learn also to say, Amen. This means that we do not doubt that our prayer is surely heard, and that what we pray shall be done. This is nothing else than the word of undoubting faith, which is not praying a dare, but knows that God does not lie to him. For he has promised to grant it. Therefore, where there is no such faith, there cannot be true prayer either. It is therefore an evil deception on those who pray as though they could not dare from the heart to say yes, that is amen, and positively conclude that God hears them. Instead, they remain in doubt and say, how can I be so bold as to boast that God hears my prayer? For I am but a poor sinner, not there such thing. The reason for this is they do not respect God's promise, but they rely on their own work and worthiness, by which they despise God and accuse him of lying. Therefore they receive nothing. As James says, But let him ask in faith no doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not, must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. James 1, 6 and 7. Behold, God attaches such importance to this fact that we can be sure we do not pray in vain, so that we do not despise our prayer in any way. Um, one thing to note on the the Lord's petition, uh, the the Lord's prayer at the seventh petition, it is deliver us from the evil one. That would be a, a better translation. Uh, deliver us from evil works perfectly well as a translation. I'm not saying that you need to add an evil need to add one to the end of there. But the 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 danger in how we translate it is that when we just say deliver us from evil, we can abstract that into a idea. Oh, whatever is bad, whatever is, wh whatever. No, we, we're, we're dealing with concrete, real, tangible evil. The things worked out by Satan to hurt and harm you. God doesn't deal with pretend evils or imaginary evils. He protects you from true and real evil. He doesn't deal with pretend death or, or pretend sin. He deals with real sin. He deals with real death. Christ Jesus takes away the sin of the world, really. He died a real death to defeat a real devil to win you freedom, real freedom, and to win you life, real life. Life now and life eternal. So, with that being said, and knowing that, all things are done by him for our good. Let us now pray the litany as found on page 288, as is our uh, Wednesday custom. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. 
in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring to the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful labors into your hearts, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanders, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayer of the day. <clears throat> o God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on his holy Sabbath, so may we also await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life. He who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. All right, everyone. Um, have a good day and all that good stuff, and I will see you later. Bye.